Today I'm going to be continuing my exploration of the expansive world of perspective. Now the last time I tried it, it kind of got thrown on me and I didn't realize what I was doing at the time. And I did it very incorrectly, I guess you could say. Like I ended up with a drawing, so in that way it was successful, but I didn't really follow the rules that could have made it easier. So I've done a little bit of research, learned a few things, and now I want to give it another go. And maybe in the process we can learn a little something together. I watched quite a few YouTube videos on perspective and I found a whole playlist that I found the most helpful and had like all the most concise information in one place. So I will link that in the description. That's your homework if you want to learn a little something something. So this was the last attempt. I think we need to continue doing fun colors again. That seems important. So I've got a couple supplies here. Got no who. I think it's from the pastel markers because I want to draw lightly. Last time I sketched with marker and it seemed to work pretty well. And I have like a liner for adding lines. So the first step. If I want to draw a building is I kind of have to create my frame. So that's the box in which the art is contained. You know it might be interesting. Before we do the frame, let's create our vanishing points. If you want to use perspective and you want to like follow the rules of perspective, one of the most important things is the horizontal line. Actually, it's called the horizon line, but it is a horizontal line all the same. And this is something I completely omitted last time and it, it got me in a little bit of trouble. I feel like I pulled it off. I don't think my art is somehow less finished because I did it wrong, but like this is an easier way. So I'm going to just create a horizontal, sorry, horizon line, and it's going to be horizontal across the page. I'm just going to put it directly in the middle. I just want to test all these rules and see how well they work for me, see how much easier they make life. And then maybe we can just draw a bunch of frames and kind of use different perspective that we've created. I don't know if that makes any sense. It kind of makes sense in my head. If, but anyway, this is another place where I went very, very wrong last time. When you're creating your vanishing points, especially in two and three point perspective, listen to this, they have to be placed on your horizon line. I was just putting them willy nilly, which I mean, it kind of worked, but like it didn't make it easy. So the close the closer you place them, the more distorted things are going to look and fish-eyed. The further away you put them, the more natural your perspective is going to look. Like you're just sort of looking out the window, you know? This horizon line, the higher you put it, the more earth will say you see and less sky, which means you're looking down. If you put your horizon line lower, the more sky and less earth you'll see, so you're looking up. I just put it in the middle and I thought we could kind of draw some pictures all over the place and kind of test it out and see how things look depending on where the horizon line is. Now I'm going to put in our vanishing points and like I mentioned they are supposed to go on your horizon line. Now you can kind of put them anywhere specifically if you have like a frame you can have one inside the frame one outside you can have both of them outside the frame which I will demonstrate as I draw frames all over the place. What I'm going to be doing is a majority of two point perspective. I'm not doing one point perspective and I'm not doing three point perspective. Two point perspective just feels the most natural to me. Three point I'm not going to really get into it but it can make your like stiff buildings just feel more dynamic. And then one point perspective is for when you want everything to kind of just go into one point, which just isn't what I want to do right now. So we're doing two points. So I'm going to get to pick two vanishing points. Now I can kind of just put them anywhere because I'm not really trying to do anything specific. So I'm just going to put one on this end of the line I drew and one on this end of the line. Now, if I have like a frame here, my two vanishing points are going to be really far away. But if I were to draw a frame here, one vanishing points here and one's way over there and it's going to create a completely different perspective. So this is probably extremely confusing, but I think once I start, it might make a little bit more sense. I'm kind of just trying to set up some prep work for the whole two pages in this whole sketchbook. So next we're going to create, here's my new favorite word, orthogonals. Isn't that a funny word? Anyway, so orthogonals are the lines that we create that start at any vanishing point we've created and just spread outwards straight from there. And then this one will get them as well. So that's what I'm going to do with my little ruler. I'm just going to fill the whole page with this. I will report back to you once I've finished orthogonaling my sketchbook. I got to do the same thing with this other vanishing point. Voila, we have all of our orthogonals. We obviously can add more if need be. They're a little, I messed up a little bit on that one, but the closer to the vanishing point, the more kind of distorted things will be. I might use one, probably that one because it turned out better. <laughs> well, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the frame. Where do we want the horizontal line in the first one? I kind of think I want something straight from here. Oh, now I'm using that and I said I didn't want to do that. We'll cut it off here, create a nice frame. 
So that's our little window into the universe. And now we just have to uh, put the universe inside of it. I think I'll grab a different pen. Maybe keep my orange theme. Move to another light color. I can go ahead and draw in some boxes. So what I do is I just kind of find a corner where they intersect and draw straight down. That's our vertical line. I'm gonna just connect with another one. So that's kind of the corner of a building. When I was doing it before, I found it really easy to just draw boxes. And from what I've watched, that's kind of what you're supposed to do. So we just kind of create some boxes. I guess that's gonna go off the edge. Now here, I don't have enough orthogonals. <laughs> and enjoy every time I get to say that. So I take that vanishing point and the tip of that building. So basically each point of a square that you're drawing should line up orthogonally with your vanishing point. So I'm just gonna draw in some boxes and then we'll add in some fun details, I guess. I'm gonna make them, um, I don't know, different heights. Maybe a little alley between this one. Again, using vertical lines. I'm gonna have them all end. I'm making that the ground level right there. Now, something that you can't really account for from what I've learned is the, like the foreshortening. You kind of just have to wing it and learn as you go. But like things that get further away should get smaller. So like these buildings are all kind of staying roughly the same size, which makes me think the ones for the way are actually bigger. But yeah, any of the buildings that line up with this are technically the same height. There we have our little row of buildings. Well, boxes. I mean, those could be cardboard boxes in an attic. They don't have to be building, right? Still experimenting. I don't know everything, clearly. We're just gonna play around with this and see what happens. I would like to put a building on the other side of the street here. Oh, that'll lose all those. Do I want to put a building? Maybe something small, like a cart. Kind of see how I'm grabbing those lines. Helps if you make the sound effects. Now we're gonna make that a triangle. Actually, that looks like a subway entrance. Maybe we'll go with that, we'll round it. It seems properly sized too, if that's like a pretty big building. Now, this is our sidewalk. If we pretend like our sidewalk is a very short building, you'll notice that because it's the under the horizon line that we're going to see the top of it. There you go. I'm gonna go ahead, say that's pretty good. I'm gonna look up some references now before I add in any little details. And then I'll kind of like chip into these boxes to kind of look at more the style I want. I'm thinking on this building we'll add like a kind of a sign following those perspective lines. I'm thinking this is like fire escape thing. I'm gonna just use dots maybe for the windows for now. Now anything that lines up with the horizon line is gonna be completely horizontal. So those lines are easy. So this is kind of the street. I'm gonna color in the street since I don't really feel like drawing any cars. Block that in for now. Also kind of helps me see the frame a little better. Little subway. I might add like a really tall building in the distance. You can kind of see how having these vanishing points really gets rid of the guesswork of what a building would look like when it's when I just want to throw one in right here. You got to keep in mind if it's further away then things are going to be a lot smaller. That's the part that you really can't just rely on the lines to tell you that. You kind of just have to draw things smaller. Wow, see how much fuller the city looks now? I'm going to color in the sky though with that dark gray just to kind of block it out and find the shapes of these buildings buildings a little better. So at this point I think I'm gonna grab a fine liner and just add in little details and then we'll decide how much of this I want to color. This is the part where I feel like you can be the most creative. Throw in some gargoyles, you know, whatever you want. I think I messed up with the triangle. The center should have been like here. Gets a little confusing when you're not just drawing a box anymore. This is the line, I know where it goes. It's just vertical. <laughs> windows should kind of line up with the vanishing points as well. And this building's supposed to be farther away, so these windows must be huge. But because of the way I drew them, it kind of looked like they're just normal size windows, so that's not helping. Windows are tricky because the top and the bottom, depending on how close you are to a vanishing point, can be extremely different. <laughs> But that's what really helps it look more or less realistic. So it's very important because that's above the horizon line. You're actually gonna see the bottom of these. I want to grab some kind of color in these windows. Oh, I wanted something lighter. It just helps it look a little more like a window. But essentially, you can kind of see how using these lines helps you figure out where stuff goes or where not to put things. Having these little tiny windows kind of make that look much further away, which is nice. Midgy board of this one. It's not getting me very excited. And I do want to like play around with some of these other grid lines here. So I might do that. Maybe I'll go back to the pink and purple of last time. I think that came to me more interested. Maybe add like a little... Hmm, okay, well, so that fine liner totally doesn't like Copic marker. Glad I did that on this one and not this future one that I'm gonna love. I can feel it, I can feel it. But the perspective's pretty good except for when I tried to do the little tower. So we're headed in the right direction here. Where's my Posca pan? 
again. I can't find the Posca pen I was looking for, but I did find these. This one's a lot bigger, so I'm not gonna get the super fine points, but I should really throw in some stars here. There's really no rhyme or reason to the color. I wanted to color that green, so I did, and then I never felt the need to color anything green, and then I didn't. Maybe we should just throw a little bit of that somewhere. Anyway. I don't want to put any more time into that. I want to move on. So let's draw another frame this time. Why don't we do one right smack dab in the center? Let's do one where the horizon line's a lot higher up in the page. Oh my goodness. Okay, now do I want to continue that same picture or do I want to just make up a whole new one? Clearly I'm going to need a lot more of these orthogonals. I hope that's actually what it was because now it sounds wrong when I say it. What I'm realizing with this one is that we've got a lot less like distortion in our squares. There's a lot more room for bigger squares. So we'll see how that makes things look. Okay, a little confusing, but we know that this is the horizon line. These are the vanishing points. So if I get confused, that's all I need, right? For this one, I might just try to do New York again and redeem myself. So if that's the horizon line, then we're kind of looking down at buildings. We're just gonna draw one in again. Just use vertical lines and connect some of these and see where we're at. This kind of feels like the top of the building. So I'm gonna just grab that square that's already been made for me and use that. Draw straight down from the corners. So you can kind of see because we're below the horizon line, you see the top of the building another one here. What if we did like a little subdivision? Kind of made that one too close, but we're still drawing kind of light. So kind of just want to have stuff that has more green to it. Okay. Last time this was a lot easier because I kind of just knew what I was drawing. I drew the same thing over and over and over again. Now I'm putting too much thought into this. I'll put a little house over here. I'm going to try and foreshorten it. Now triangle is where I got really confused. So let's do a bunch of triangles. See if I can fix that. So if we continue up with this box, there's a trick I saw find like the center point. You draw an X in it and you know that that's the center. So we know we want to go above that vertically to find the top of our triangle. Eh? Although I just did this double triangle roof. Do one little triangle. We'll have it stick out a little more too. Okay, I think that's a two-story house. So the windows should be sized accordingly. Let's add a bay window to this one. A little awning here. And that's where our little front door goes. Okay, I actually want to, while that's still fresh in my mind, because it's a little confusing, go in and actually just add in the lines. Now, if you do three point perspective, those vertical lines that we keep drawing will actually follow a third point of perspective, which I'm not ready for that. I should have started with one point perspective, but that's just the kind of angles I wanted to draw, so I didn't. <laughs> There's our front door, probably put a little window here. Well, now the bay window I wanted right here. Okay, I'm getting more into swinging this. This is feeling more natural here. I'll do some squiggly here. Let's use this triangle. Break this section of the roof. Now for this part of the triangle, I can't really tell what I'm looking at, but I'm gonna wing that part. Now this part of the triangle should follow this angle, right? I think that makes more sense. Mm -hmm. I want a window in here. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do that trick with the X again. Find the center. Clearly actually a little off, but now I know like where the window's gonna go. Oh, <gasps> it needs a chimney. I'm gonna just stick it back here. Use this for our squares. Do a little uh, that siding. Continued on here. Kinda of looks a little log cabin -y actually. Again, using these same grid marks. Very confusing. It's also very simple at the same time. I think the most important thing is just sort of patience. If you try to like skip it out, that's when you start making the mistakes. You have to just really think about every line that you place. Now that might just be beginner stuff because I feel like the more you learn about this, the better you'll get at eyeballing it because it's gonna become more of a second nature. Whereas when you're starting, you're still like trying to just visualize, okay, that's where the lines are. Ah, gotta add this house, I think. I'll make this the corner of the street. So we can add like, it's like the edge of the grass, these lines. And then that way I can add like a garage here that goes out into the street. This feels like I'm going back to my sim days. <laughs> oh, you know what? It needs trees too. Let's make sure we have a tree this time. I'm gonna draw a little, little box. What the? Tree. Just so I don't forget that I want a tree there. Now this part, I wanted this to be like the garage. So this is a garage door. We do some little vertical lines. Ooh, we could have like the second story go up here. Now those are kind of double the height. We're gonna have the roof kind of come this way. I want like windows here. Not that many. <laughs> I forgot I'm not drawing skyscrapers. Since this one's a little bit more distorted and squashed, 
We'll do that trick with the triangles or the X's, I guess. That is where the triangle would go. This house isn't as pretty as that. I feel like it needs something. You'd have the garage be stuck out a little further. I don't know if I've ever seen a house where the garage stuck out further. Anyway, I've got all the boxes done and the more I go over them, the more confused I get. So I'm just gonna go back to the line art and do what I know. So I know I want this to be a tree. We got the garage door and the roof. I want it to come down like this. Okay, got an idea. This is like the front door area. It's gonna be a really big grand front door. A window, doorknob, and this is the driveway. Break it up the cement. Probably stick some windows in here. Or we could do like one long window. It's like broken up into different panes. I'm gonna give it that big round entryway windows. And they usually have like a hanging light in there. All right, I want to color this. We finished adding a little siding in this house. Wait, do we want a window? Is that a window? Another bigger window. Okay, I don't want to color this. I'm gonna grab just like a light pastel green first. Actually, wait, I said I was gonna do this purple. The decisions! I will just do it in purple. First, I'm gonna use the color that I already have out. Just kind of color one of these houses. I don't mean to sound sad about it. I just, I'm trying to like make the best decision and it wasn't the one I was making. So I was like, ah, I'm gonna grab a much lighter purple for this garage door. Something darker for the roof, which is clearly not dark enough. That could work for windows though, I bet. Hey, I screwed, I'm doing green for the tree. <laughs> just stick with these sort of like muted colors. Something a little lighter, just to kind of like blend it outwards. Color picking is something I also have a lot of trouble with, along with perspective. I should try and just find a palette and kind of stick with it. I colored the front door with this blue color. I'll go with that with like the gray. Might leave it bright on the door. Ooh, that's the contrast that it needed. Since it's the brick, I'll do this thing too. I'm gonna just draw in the frame. I'm getting a little lost over on this side. Boom, we got a frame. I'm gonna add a big old oak tree or something back here. Bring more of that green color. I want something a little more blue for this one's roof, but not the same blue. All right, colors kind of threw it off. I'm just having one of those days. I need to add in a sky color. Maybe something slightly bluer than that even. Ooh. My paper's getting all messed up. I'm not sure why. I've never seen it do this before. Maybe it's telling me to quit on this. I don't want to give up yet. I'm gonna add some clouds with my posca pen. Okay. We gotta do at least one more. What I'm learning here is uh, like where I'm putting the frame and how it kind of affects how you're looking at a building. Definitely want one like up here so we can see what it's look like looking up at something. I mean, I guess that one's looking up at something for the most part because it does take up so much space above the horizon line. Should we try and do one like down here and one up here, not touching the horizon line and see what that looks like? Maybe this time do it in gray so I don't embarrass myself with my color choices. I mean, it has like a very cartoony, like sort of like the Simpsons color vibe just drearier anyway. okay this time i'm going to draw in the frame maybe do a smaller one like in a really weird spot i'm thinking right here just draw a box and then i gotta go with it here's our new frame i'm gonna grab I'll do neutral gray too and just re-put these guys in so this one my horizon line's way at the bottom which means we're looking up at stuff maybe we should do like a tree house or something what i'm gonna do is find a box like i always do and this time you see the bottom of the box now if i want this to be a tree house we need a tree i think i'll have it come kind of like big thick tree okay now we want it to look like a house now do i want it to be like a straight up little kids tree house or like a tiny home in the tree with indoor plumbing and all that plumbing sounds fun because then i can draw like pipes like just kind of come straight down maybe to some kind of reservoir this one's actually really exciting me so i think i'm gonna grab a pencil and sketch it in a little bit i'm giving it a pattern of like wood clearly needs windows i feel like it needs big windows oops first time i'm racing today <laughs> sketch the tree in there not sure how the tree it would like actually sit in the tree. Would there be like wood planks kind of like nailed into it? I just imagine like screws kind of like barely pushed all the way through. Do like some leaves here. Maybe this will just be a backyard tree house. <laughs> Starting to look like it. I'm gonna do that same thing where I connect the corners to find the center. And that's our triangle. Gonna erase these. Don't need those. Don't need that. Since we're using a pencil, might as well take advantage of erasing. <laughs> now I want a little porch. Maybe right here. I think this little porch will go a little higher up here. Connect there. So you kind of like step down into that area. Now this side of the treehouse will just be open. So you can actually see the inside of it. So we need to find those edges again. Okay, it's a little nicer than just 
<laughs> held up with just those beams, so I wonder if I should get rid of these little two by fours. Maybe this side's like completely opened? Or we could put like a chalkboard, some drawing. Man, who didn't want a treehouse growing up? I can only imagine how cool that would be. At least draw in the rest of this tree here. I made it so you'd straight up just see through that. Maybe I'll just use a couple beams just so you can't fall through it. And then this one's an actual wall. And we gotta have like a rope. Is that a rope kind of coming out of here? Just like knots in it so you can kind of climb up it. But good luck, you have to have a lot of muscles for that one. <laughs> it also needs just a little extra like lived in vibe, you know? The rope helps. Maybe a little umbrella. Oh, a flag, it needs a flag, it needs a flag. Actually, what if the flag just comes out of the tree somewhere? And it can kind of fill that space. Just color in the sky. Okay, that's my favorite so far. Having fun with the pencil. Okay, let's throw in another one down here. Kind of just fill in the space. And I'll just see what happens when I look at it. Do like a horizontal shape. Go ahead and add in these guys again. Oops, that moved and that was not even the color I wanted. So we're looking down. Start with a nice box. Okay, got really long. Kind of looks like a couch actually. Do that trick to find the center. Hmm? We got like a side table. What about a circular side table? Moving into the pencil. Now I have my very base squares here. Try and find the shape of this couch. Couch. I'm just kind of amused that I'm drawing a couch right now. I don't know why. Maybe that's a mirror. And we'll have like a kind of a gallery wall of some kind. Add a drawer. Oh, we need a lamp. Very simple lamp. There's a dresser or something over here. I just separate it from the other pieces of this. Maybe there's a wall here. Oh, I don't draw this sort of thing. This is so weird. Really mad about that dark gray line. I wonder if I can kind of just get rid of some of it. Hmm. Looks about right. Don't think I broke too many rules. Hopefully none, but I don't want to go on record saying I didn't break any of them. A rug. I didn't like some wood texture on the floor. That requires some perspective lines. Hey, I'm kind of impressed with how well this works. Should I do one more up here? We got room. Let's do one with the horizon line at the very bottom of the paper. I wonder what that does. Well, I guess it wouldn't make much of a difference because you don't actually have to use the horizon line as anything, you know? I want to do something where you're like looking into something like that. That was kind of fun. Right now, this just looks like a door frame. I guess we could raise the ground level higher and then it would be more of like a tunnel. So we're looking into something. Still haven't figured out what it is I'm looking into. You know, it could be a garage. <laughs> the car would be over this. So the car would use these lines. Is that right? I think that makes sense. I just don't know where the tires would go. I think it'd be wider because you're close. It's closer to the viewer, right? But this would probably go like way further over there. Maybe you'd see the tire and then you'd have a big car. It's kind of doing more of a one point perspective because of where I put the horizontal line. This makes me wonder if I did this wrong. <laughs> Problem is, is because I put the ground above the horizon line. I wonder if that's like a no-no. I wonder if it is because this isn't making any sense in my brain. So I'll just restart that one. Let's just go back to a good old cityscape. We're above the horizontal. No, we're at the horizon line. Why is that making it so confusing? Okay, I kind of remember doing something like this last time. And it did confuse the crap out of me. When I did this, I used one of the lines as the base. Okay, so I'm thinking your stuff has to end at the horizon line or below it. If you want it above, then you're going to see it underneath of it. So then it doesn't really work, you know? You just have to draw the bottom of something. You know what this could be? A briefcase. There's like a handle. Then there's an arm. There's a body. I haven't even begun to add like bodies in perspective because it confuses me because I'm not using squares. I mean, there's still shapes like bodies are made up of shapes, but I'm not ready for that. I'm not ready. Guess what we'll do is we'll just have it go beyond the bottom here. Oh, you know what? because that's the horizon line. I wonder if it's just gonna look ugly because it's the edge. I think it's gonna be obvious that that's the horizon line when I finish this, but I'm gonna do it anyway just to see. So basically the windows will line up with this. And we're close to this one, so it's gonna be pretty distorted here. Add like a ornate sort of door. It's a little wilder wester. Wilder west? Wild wester? I don't know. It's so alone. It's such a skinny little building. It needs another, it needs a friend. Do some long skinny windows, floor to ceiling. Put something on top of this building. We'll add a tree. Let me put those like sort of industrial windows here. 
It's not super obvious that the horizon line's right there, just because I didn't like end the building there. I made it so that the building goes further. If I had made that the bottom of the building, I think it would have been too much tangents going on. But uh, yeah, there's a thing. <laughs> not the most exciting one, but like it follows the rules that I laid out for myself using these and this. I still obviously have a lot to learn. I did just want to come in and like update it though, because I've learned so much in the last couple weeks and I just wanted to kind of showcase that. Even if it didn't make the prettiest spread ever. It's still cool. I like how there's big squares and they get smaller. <laughs> I still really like this page. Oh, and I even learned a lot to make doing it the wrong way. So the point when I like started to learn how to do it properly, it clicked a lot faster. Cause you know, when you like watch a video and it's like something you don't know anything about and like it's going in one ear and out the other, like you don't know what part of it to really like memorize because there's just so much and you're trying to memorize it all. And then you end up walking away and not remembering anything. But because I had done it wrong, you know, it really helped understand what these people were talking about but again I will have links in the description to the playlist I found that I thought was the most helpful so if you're interested in kind of learning how to do this I highly recommend it it was really really informative anyway thank you guys for watching I hope you'll have a delicious evening full of waffles bye I just need to draw a person one sec anyway I'm leaving now bye